Here is what EastEnders could have been. There's a little article that came out where one of the former like BBC like head controllers or whatever, Lord Michael Grade, you started talking about how when he took over like the BBC at the time, he had a certain show that was left on his hands. And it's a little funny article as to what EastEnders could have been had he not been like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so let's just, I'm sure just going to read out. Uh, an idea that essentially has been dubbed. Uh, to EastEnders was actually a last-minute addition to our screens where plans for a drama series set and a caravan park was axed. So, a fucking caravan park. EastEnders. 39 years. Gold. Groundbreaking TV show. Social issues up the fucking ass. Could have been a caravan park, which is fucking wild to see. Um, and it's... What, how, how do you reckon that would have been? I'd imagine it would have been like a combination of like Benidorm and like fucking... I don't even know what the other one to compare it to, but it was just like nothing you'd ever imagine. It'd be in the fuck ass of Scotland somewhere in the fucking valleys. Uh, that's wild. But like, it'd be in the fucking, like, it'd be up in the high mountains somewhere in fucking Scotland. I just, who, who like, it's dirty down the part of the original thing, like, is there? No, no. The is, EastEnders was clearly drawn nah. up, like, as a fucking surprise little one um you know what i i'm sorry you didn't get to see the camera can we bring back the camera time to be fair fair, the bbc did try to do a slightly similar soap in a sense where they they made this show this soap called el dorado which was like this hotel in like spain but it would have been a bunch of like people like a bunch of like you know, all the all the older like English people like moving over to like migrate and stay there and retire. And basically the issue is people weren't ready for it and they kind of tried to mimic the same success of EastEnders, but it's a lot more of a it was a lot harder of a buy in. Um but you know, it was made by Tony Holland. I'm pretty sure I don't know if Julia Smith worked on it at all. I think she had a meltdown or something. Uh, but, you know, you had some of the famous, like, EastEnders characters. You had, like, Charlie Slater in there. Um, you know, yeah, and they tried to, like, gamble on some of these, like, because EastEnders managed to gamble and, like, ha- find some fucking gems in the rough, like Ian, like, Sh- Sharon, like, fucking a bunch of these unknown young actors. They kind of, they tried to do the same here, but it didn't really work the same. It's it was an, it only ran for like a year and yeah, it didn't really work in the same way, unfortunately. But I think it was also a very hard sell because it was supposed to be this like fucking glamorous like upmarket soap when what it ended up being was like who, who what's your fan base for a bunch of people who migrated over to Spain, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, who the fuck cares, really? Well, what's the buy-in there? Uh, but yeah, um, carrying on this article though. Uh, according to Lord Michael Grade, former controller of BBC One, the series was going to be set in the northeast of England, revolving around its elderly residents, but was quickly scrapped. Fucking it! Imagine Lou Beale and fucking Ethel in a caravan. With Willy, just fucking <laughs> the absolute mayhem. I don't hate the idea of it being like a little caravan park because you know it's still the same sort of setup. It's a very closed community, you know, some unsavory characters in there. But it's also they were fucking. They were trying to. Obviously, what it became is East London. They're going up to the northeast. They're going to be in fucking in Northern Territory. The whole point of B- of the BBC trying to get a soap was to not be like Coronation Street. <laughs> like, yep, gonna do a caravan park in the northeast. It's like, well, what's the fucking point in that, lads? There's there's no need. You already have Coronation Street. It's like those shit memes that we have Coronation Street at home. It's a bunch of old fucks in a caravan park. Like fucking moaning about the price of bread 
Nobody wants that. Who who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> it's so it's so absurd. Um, yeah, the idea was replaced by a drama for each and lies of East Londoners in a bid to compete with the success of ITV's Coronation Street. Speaking to Boom Radio, Lord Grade said, "Fucking Lord Grade, that's a fucking belter of a name right there as well." Fair fuck, he's a lord and he's called Michael Grade. Uh, I don't know, something, something greater, hardly know her. There we are. Um, I asked to see the head of drama series, Jonathan Powell. I said, tell me about this alleged soap opera. And he said, I've only just taken over. The show I've inherited is set in a geriatric caravan park in the northeast. <laughs> and he says, my face fell. I said, really? Where is that now? And he said, I've been that. We've got a show called EastEnders. It's based on a square in the East and the London. <laughs> Like, fuck me. But imagine that. Like, you know, that's that sounds like the most poison chalice possible. Where it's like, oh yeah, see, I've got a show. It's about um, it's about a colony of ants, but they're gonna be human ants, and it's gonna be set in an ant colony. And you're like, what the fuck are you on? <laughs> like, we're selling this to a fucking national audience and you're fucking trying to get me to do a show full of bugs right it's human get the fucking people in there uh that's what i feel like this guy fucking like imagine having to pitch to this new guy like all right he's gonna take control of bbc one you know as at the time you know there wasn't that many fucking tv channels it was like fucking i don't know how many probably like less than 10 so that it's why when everybody talks about viewing figures being so high, there wasn't anything else. <laughs> you, you couldn't watch anything else. You had fucking ITV, you had BBC One. I don't know if they had Channel 4, but you didn't have much. So as much as people joke like, yeah, sure, the viewing audience for soaps used to be higher, but there was also so much less going on in the world. <laughs> everybody watched it because it's all you had. And it was also fairly fresh anyway. It's like you could fucking... No, there, there was no shame attached to it. Um... <laughs> but yeah, he says, uh, though he agreed the idea sounded a bit better than a geriatric, than a geriatric caravan park, <laughs> Lord Grey admitted he was anxious about how his standards would be received until he watched the first episode. I remember with some, with some considerable trepidation putting the cassette in the machine and thinking, oh my god, you know, this is a year's commitment. This could be horrible. And as the music and the opening titles played, I knew it was okay. Man, I can imagine this this fella just having a cry, just like... <laughs> Come on. Come on, EastEnders. Come on, my job's on the <laughs> line. Come on, EastEnders. <laughs> and then you watch it and he's like... <sighs> Ooh, <laughs> get some fucking champagne out you, motherfuckers. Guess who's fucking nailed it? I'm the king, Lord Michael Great. I can see it now. Reckon, Name and lights. <laughs> do you reckon, like, he, do you reckon he was, like, um, watching the episode, like, it was a bunch of horses racing? Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Oh, I mean, to be fair, he didn't yeah. even spend that long oh, in his... He didn't even spend that long in with the fucking BBC. Like, he was there for two years. <laughs> left to left to run Channel 4 for nine years. And then joined the BBC and then ITV again. Um, <laughs> apparently now he's, now, he's uh, now he's chairman of Ofcom. So, and a politician, so... You know, <laughs> good old Michael Grade. Never knew him before today. Don't think I'll ever know him again. But, uh, yeah. And then, obviously, he just fucking says, obviously, EastEnders was deliberately made to contrast Corrie's, like, northern culture. Um, And it became... I, know, I will say that Coronation Street... It was, obviously, the fucking... Well, not pioneer, necessarily, but obviously was the biggest and the most known but coronation street still had a much more like day-to-day -day kind of 
feel to it. But obviously, Extenders came in with a bit more grit, a bit more edge, you know. The fucking first storyline with Nick Cotton, that he's part of an alt-right Nazi fucking... Maybe not Nazi necessarily, like, technically, but he's a part of a fucking... It's an alt-right group. Uh, what's it? What, what, what even was it? Yeah, he was a Nazi. No, he was a Nazi. He was part of a fucking fascist Nazi group, essentially. Uh, you had fucking prostitution. Oh. You had drugs. You had a lot of very much darker shit. And how it, at the core, it was a family show. But like fucking two months in, you have a baby suddenly die. And it's like, oh, fuck. What the fuck happened here? So it definitely did become like this big, like much more edgy program to suit uh you know, it's a slightly different audience because, look, Coronation Street, it is fluffy and even now it's still slow, it's still fucking a bit lighter. And I say this as a fucking renewed Coronation Street fan. I've found the passion back somewhat. Look at, look at me go. I would have been shitting on it two months ago. Uh, not there yet, of course. Still have, like, two months to go, but <laughs> we're getting there. Um, But, yeah, obviously made to be a much more serious, a much grittier. And, you know, they had to take their identity because you didn't fucking have any, you know? You have to establish who you are. It's just like us. We fucking establish we're two dickheads who talk to the camera and banter on a podcast. That's what we do. That's who we are. And, you know, we aren't, you know, we're... It's even like the other podcasts in the space, like Wolford After Dark, definitely have a much, much different audience than us. We're a lot more crass. We're a lot more fucking weirder you know and ah. we definitely we have our place they have their place we're all the one in this lovely community uh but who the fuck no why am i even going with this point being you gotta establish who you are and what you plan to do because otherwise people don't know where to stand and where people stood was as eastenders fans as it gave a much different alternative to the northern exterior of coronation street and brought all the way to this gritty london exterior now and remember the history of eastenders now and remember where it came from and just remember that it could have been a fucking caravan park full of pensioners in the northeast how the fuck did it survive because it was a great idea simply and the geriatric fucking caravan park simply went oh <laughs> ow which, what the fuck was somebody thinking making that like god damn but yeah hell of a fucking story that was a great great article to read and very fun that was from digital spy uh by D by D D divya sonny uh if you want to go ahead and read the article it's on digital spy go ahead and do that but as a whole i think we've kind of said our piece we've given it the time so that's this done for this video of watching wolford Here's what East Enders could have been a geriatric car park, car park, caravan park, rather. Um, as what people have said, we don't plug it enough. Obviously, we have a Discord in the description if you want to join it, where you can talk to us about stuff. And finally, just all the other links are in the description if you want to support us. Thank you for watching. We've been watching Walford. Join us in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.